Hello Simmers, today for the PMDG news update, I would like to focus on PMDG liveries on Xbox, on the 737 on Xbox and the tablet, and finally on the latest development of the Boeing 777. Remember the videos are translated in French and various languages, so make sure to add them if you need them. And this is how Robert starts. For Xbox users and liveries, we are evaluating a long-term strategy to expand the number of liveries available to our Xbox customers across the entire PMDG product spectrum. There are a wide range of legal and technical questions that have to be evaluated and correctly answered, but our goal is to improve our ability to widen what is available for Xbox users as we move into the post-777 release phase. This has been an important issue for our Xbox customers. Yeah, that's uh, damn right. And we want to make sure we have a clear-eyed understanding of what the future looks like for livery distribution in both Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and 2024 before committing resources to the task, but please do know this is on the agenda under discussion currently. When I have more information to share, we will. Once again, guys, I would like to highlight PMDG's efforts on behalf of the Xbox community. Yes, they have been much criticized for their livery pack on the 737, and I myself think that they have a bit exaggerated on the content of certain packs, pointing out that it was not always very fair play. But uh, let's move on. Today, Robert seems to want to find a solution. We will see in the future how it goes. And uh, let's move on to the second chapter on the 737 on Xbox and the tablet, which wasn't mentioned in the last PMDG news update. Open the quote. Uh, last week, we heard back from Asobo regarding the data we collected to demonstrate that the communications features in Microsoft Flight Simulator appear not to work when run on a production Xbox console, and thus breaking the airplane tablet interface when the 737 is used on an Xbox console. There has been some back and forth discussion and we learned earlier in the week that the problem has been identified and resolved. We have a follow-up inquiry in place to see if we cannot gain some insight into exactly when the fix will land on Xbox units so we can begin pushing backlogged updates to the Xbox community, but we haven't received an answer to that inquiry as of this writing. All the same, this is very good news as it will seem to indicate that the effort on data collection in the live Xbox environment proved beneficial and we will finally be back on keeping our Xbox and PC customers in parallel status, which makes us quite happy. I want to throw one asterisk in this jubilation. We have not had an opportunity to, to test the fix and we do not know if it was tested on actual hardware or emulator where the problem never existed. So I just want to urge a bit of calm in the anticipation level as we await an opportunity to test and see it for ourselves. We will pass along more information as we get it. Okay, so this information sounds promising and once more in a week, it seems Asobo is making progress to correct their own issues, their own mistakes. So big shout out to PMDG for their effort to bring the Xbox to the same level to the PC version. But at the moment, as you understood, we have no guarantee. And finally, some news on the 777. Open the quote. In a few hours, we will be shipping another beta version of the 777 to our testing team. We are in a transitional phase of beta testing where our ability to resolve items in nearly equally matched by our beta team's insistence in finding new items to report. Since commencing testing six weeks ago, our testing team has opened 541 reports and we have resolved 432 of them. We use this trend data 
as part of our decision making and how we approach uh, scheduling a release. This transitional phase tends to be followed by a phase during which we will get ahead of the reporting curve just slightly, but we will see a change in the character of the inbound reports. There is a natural phase when instead of reporting, I did uh, this too and the plane did that when it should have done this. The testers begin to report aspirational things such as would it be possible to add this feature or has anyone ever considered doing blah blah blah. When we reach that phase, then we begin to go through and start categorizing open reports to figure out what we'll be including in the release to market version and what will be held in abeyance for future change cycles. So here we have a lot of talking from Robert, but not much information so far because of my personal experience. Every developer goes through the, this phase. But um, okay, let's see what's next. Open quotes. I mentioned uh, last week that we had spent some time doing a follow-up comparison survey with a 777 to compare our results with the actual airplane and collect some finishing touches to really make our product stand out for accuracy and quality. One of the things we did during that visit was give close attention to the many hatches, antennas, probes and fittings as Microsoft Flight Simulator allows us to get into far greater detail levels than has been possible previously. There are also some key pre-flight checkpoints on the 777 that we want to be sure were modeled correctly and included in the product for those who like to spend time on a ramp prepping their flight and this lead to some changes to various fine outside details. This week Jason was hard at work implementing some of the changes we had identified and adding new level of details to existing features. I was working on brake energy tuning, which required continually overheating the brakes to make them fail. And I asked Jason if he could recreate something I wanted to share with you in this weekend's update. And yes, guys, we have a new picture of the 777 with brakes heating up. That's for sure, it's, it's a very cool feature and we can't wait to see that in action. Also to mention that some features found in the 777 development are being added to the 737 tablet, which is quite cool. And that's it for today, guys. And thanks for watching. See you soon on the channel. Bye-bye.